everyone welcome back to the channel uh, today I'm doing another making a murder video um, I just want to say thank you again to everyone who subscribes and likes my videos uh, it does mean a lot and I will say again the reddit people um, they're on a different level they remind me of Ken Kratz just kind of slimy greasy and they don't want the truth to come out because um, a lot of people get mad on there because information that I'm saying in these videos are, is already out there, but not everyone's balls deep in making a murder. And my videos, I just see it as more of like a little bit of an insight into the major points of the case. So um, I'm gonna let those people continue to be upset and angry at the world. Um, they seem to like making fun of my eyebrows, but uh, I think they're pretty nice. Uh, is what it is. So um, today what I'm going to talk about with the case is Bobby Dassey, Blaine Dassey, which there's not a lot of videos out there on, and Scott Toddick. So I'm going to go through some transcripts and just a few things um, pinpointing some of their testimony and things with uh, their alibis. So first thing I want to just mention is Scott Toddick and Bobby Dassey both alibi each other with hunting stories, but they were not hunting together. They just were crossing each other as they were passing on Highway 147, and that was their alibi. That's the only two people that knew where they were, apparently, and they just knew that each other was going hunting. So first, we're gonna talk about Blaine Dassey. Um, his testimony changed back and forth, it seems like, from what I was reading and just going through the transcripts. He gets out of school every day at 3.05. He gets home at 3.40 every day, just like on October 31st. And this is another thing to point out. The school bus driver and probably the most unbiased person in the whole case and probably someone that Kratz and his clan um, didn't probably think to reach and try to get turn the other way, um, said that she saw Teresa's Hall, Hallbach's car on the property still. This is important for when I get to Scott Toddick's part. So this is the crazy part to me, that Blaine actually said Bobby Dassey was sleeping still by 3.40, and him and Brendan woke up Bobby at 3.40 p.m. Blaine left to go trick-or-treating around 5.25 to 5.30, and at this point, Brendan still had not gone out to the mailbox to get mail and deliver it to Stephen, like he said in his testimony. Just reading Blaine's testimony, it does seem like um, he believes in his uncle. Um, just from the transcripts I read, um, his answers seem legitimate and they seem real, uh, but the problem is he contradicted himself back and forth with other interviews and other times he was talked to so his credibility kind of goes down the drain but from those transcripts right there Bobby Dassey was still sleeping at 340. Next we're going to talk about Scott Toddick. Um, so I feel like he was talked to the most by Kratz in preparation for court. Um, you can see here with this signal that's pretty blatant. That's while Toddick's on the stand giving signals. That's the only one I saw footage wise, but I'm sure there's other things planned between the two. So during the, while he was in court here, he said he got to the deer stand at 3 p.m. Earlier that day, he was visiting his mother who had back surgery and he was at the hospital until I can't remember what time. That's parts where it's a little unclear, but since he did say 3 p.m., when Strang cross-examines him, he does bring up, he's, he talks a lot how your memory was probably better previously when you first talked to police than now, and he agrees. And then he goes on to ask him, if I gave you the transcripts, would that refresh your brain a little bit more? So he goes on and reads them, and he actually reads in the report that he was he told the police that he got home from his mother's around 3.15, but now, he was, before, while he was in court, he was saying he got to his deer stand. So he left the hospital, went home, got his stuff, and got to the deer stand by 3. So 
no matter what happened, if you got to the deer stand at a different time, the problem is the timelines don't add up and everything just seems m mushed around and it is hard to understand what the truth is. I don't like Scott Toddick just by his demeanor and how he acts, um, but I'm gonna play this little audio clip from when um, Steve called out from prison and you can just hear how much Toddick hates Stephen Avery and just you can tell he's an angry, spastic type of person. So listen to this. Property. I wanna to talk to that fucking little bastard. I want that motherfucker to answer some fucking questions. Fuck Stephen Avery. He is a piece of shit. He's been all his fucking life. Shut Let up. him talk to the cock fucking loser. Fuck wow. him, all he's doing the only evidence they got is against him and he's trying to gas for her to blame it on somebody else. He's a fucking loser. I wasn't even on that fucking property that day, you goddamn idiot. That's how fucking intelligent you are. You learn yourself so you get up and do something stupid again, you dumb fuck. I can't wait to get home. Kick your fucking ass. Fucking motherfucker. I ain't scared huh? of him. I ain't scared of him. Wow. You ruined my fucking life. You ruined my fucking name, you dumb cocksucker. You fucking jailbird motherfucker. Yeah. I hate the cocksucker. He's ruined my fucking life. Yeah. Because you, he's trying to get out of fucking prison. And you ruined mine. You ruined mine. Look what you said. Fucking player. Yeah, you little fucker, look what you did. What you oh, said. Fucker, it's all for him and nobody else. Uh, you don't get yeah. Oh, I hate that cocksucker. I he's hate you too. Family. Everybody hates you. He kills me from, uh, 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 with, uh, with the boys that was touching him. It came from him, so he wanted the cops to put to put the blame on me off. So who would say something like that? Yeah, see, that fucker needs to be locked up. How about how about his mother? What about his mother? Yeah. What about his mother? Yeah, talk about my mother, you cash sucker. I'll yeah. put you in the fucking ground. Yeah. Fucking bastard. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Your cash sucker's a loser. He's grappling yeah. for air. Yeah, you pulled the phone out and See, everything else. The only else. evidence they got is dead Huh? Uh, his mother had to call the cops on him. Huge spaz. So, um, Stephen Avery remained calm for the most part. Um, especially being in prison and being just talked to like that. It shows that he's not a spaz type of person like Toddick who is more capable of murder in my mind. And lastly, and most importantly, Bobby Dassey, we're gonna talk about now. So Bobby Dassey last, well, he told police that he last saw Hallback while she was walking towards Avery's trailer. But on November 25th, 2005, Brian Dassey, the older brother of all the Dasseys, um, was told by Bobby that he did see Teresa leave the property completely. So there's a huge trend going on with these people, lots of contradictions and going back and forth on what was said, where their timelines were. And I do think this is, there's just been so many lies told, it's so hard for them to stay on top of which lies which, and you have to be like a savant to remember all these lies that they've told and just try to keep track of everything. So it makes sense why everything's so confusing. So the most damning evidence that's coming out now and just will, I'm sure, be played in Making a Murder, the second season when they ever do decide to release that, um, is what was found on the Dassey computer. The computer actually had images of Teresa Halbach on the computer. Images of extremely violent pornography were found on the computer involving just young women being decapitated, mutilation to their torso, lots of blood. And I can't, obviously no one can say for sure what was on there, but um, they were saying how the images and videos on the computer were very similar to what Teresa Halbach looked like, the girls that were in the film and pictures. Computer experts too are actually saying the only times that these computers and files were accessed on the computer were when Bobby Dassey was the only one home. So I just wanted to touch on those three today. Um, after I'm done doing covering everybody that I wanna cover, like the main characters in this case, um, I do want to give my actual theory and my final conclusion on what I think went down. So um, if you like these, subscribe, 
keep liking, commenting, negative or positive. I don't really give a shit. Doesn't bother me. Um, more more publicity to anything that I'm doing is better for me, you know. So all these people who want to hate and say whatever, <laughs> I do not mind. Um, I do appreciate the subscriptions though. And again, um, I got a few more people I want to go through on the list here, and then. At the end of the, um, uh, after doing all of them, I'm gonna give my final theory on what I think happened. And who knows when Making a Murder season two is gonna come out, but um, I'm sure I'll start doing videos again on that new season. But I know this is all old information and it's stuff that you can find anywhere, but I like putting it together the way I want to. And just for people who aren't balls deep in Making a Murder, this is a nice way just to get couple ideas and um, information and they can go out and do their own research or add to what I'm saying on here so everyone can get the full scoop on what's going on. So uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.